Hi, this is my second video about Microsoft Access. It's a database. I'm going to open Access and open a blank desktop database. And last lecture I talked about creating tables in when you had to type everything in by hand. This time I'm going to import my data in from another source. So if you're lucky enough to already have the data in another source like Excel or a text file, you can go in access to the external data tab. And here I'm going to look for the import section and I've got data that's in an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to import from Excel. I will browse to the location of my Excel file that has all the information I want to import. And in case you're curious, I could open it in Excel and um, show you guys what's in that file. I'm going to hit o open. And then you have the choice of opening it into a new table or, um, yeah, here's what the Excel file looks like. It is, it's a bunch of data about different airports, their identifiers, their name, the city, and the state. Um, so we've got this data in Excel, and if we want to import it into Access, then we choose to either import it into a new table or append it to an existing table. And in our database, our existing table is table one. It doesn't really have anything in it. I'm going to choose import into a new table and hit OK. And now it's going to um, try to figure out what the different information is in the table. And let's see, we've got all of the data that it's picking up, that there's four different fields that we want to create in this database. And I'm going to put a check mark here saying that the first row contains column headers, because it does. That first, if you look at the Excel file, the first row isn't actually data. It's um, more like what the names of the fields should be once they're pulled into Access. And I'll hit Next here. and. In this case, it's just going to start to identify, well, what it finds in this airport ID column looks like short text, and that's correct. And so we'll try next. Now it wants to identify a primary key, something that's unique about that data. It will either create its own key for you, or if your data already has something unique about it, like this airport identifier is a unique four digit or four letter or digit. Um, combination that's unique to the airport, so I will let that be the primary key. And and that's it. Now it's going to import it into a table. You can choose the name of the table here. Um, table airport is just as good as anything, so I'll hit finish. Um, I don't need to save those steps for importing. Once I've got my data, I'm pretty good. Um, so this, I'm going to delete table one because there's not actually anything in it. Um, so we'll just close up. So now I've got one table worth of data. And if you look at the very bottom, we can see there are 1,928 records in this uh, table in my database. So it's a good thing I didn't have to type that all in by hand. Now let's create a query for this database. To create a query, go to the Create tab and there's two types of ways to create queries. I'm going to do a query design and there's only one table to choose so I'll choose that table and let's say I want information about all of the airports in Arizona um, and let's say I'm interested in all four fields. I can just double click on the four fields and they'll appear down here and if I just want if I just run it right now, I'm going to get the whole table back. But if I want to narrow it down, I can fill something in in this criteria section. So in the criteria row, if I only want airports in Arizona, um, and I happen to know that we've got abbreviations for the states and not the whole state written there, then I can say AZ is a criteria. And that's it. That's all I want uh, for my query. I want to return all four fields, but just for the airports in Arizona. I'll go up to the red exclamation point and I'll hit run. It'll run that query and I see, looking at the bottom, there are 39 uh, records in this database table that have a state of Arizona. And if I scroll down, I can see, yes, these do all have Arizona as the state. And I can see the airport name and the city and the airport ID. Uh, we could narrow it down even more. I'm looking over here. Let's say we go back to 
notice I'm going to the view pull down menu and I can go back to design and say well I want to narrow this down even more um, or actually maybe before I narrow it down what if I want to sort it by airport name in ascending order we could do that and now we say see it's going from alphabetical order from airport names with A, B, C all the way down to Y. Um, back to design view though, what if I want to also have a criteria that the airport is in Phoenix? Uh, I can type in more than one criteria, as many as I want to, and then I can try running this again. And I can see that there are this time only four records uh, with the city of Phoenix and the state of Arizona. Now let's go back to design view. So if you type things in the criteria field, they're on the same row here, then it's kind of like saying and. The city is Phoenix and the state is Arizona. I could also do um, something in the OR criteria, like the city is Columbus or the state is Arizona. And now if I run this, there are some cases where I've got airports in Ohio because the city is, Arizona, or is Columbus and the other ones, if they don't have Columbus in the city field, they must have Arizona in the state field. So kind of interesting. So if it's in the same row, that's like thinking of and city and state. If it's in a different row, we can see it's in the or section. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll do a few more videos on access um, and hopefully clear up any questions in the next video.